accidental death from a gun is one death too many. Let me share a story with you that you may have heard from De Deerfield Beach, Florida. In February of 2010, there was a father who forgot his handgun in his pickup truck. And he asked his two young sons, a 10-year-old boy and an 11-year-old boy, to go out to the car to get his hat while he waited inside the home. Uh, the 10-year-old boy found the gun and shot and killed his 11-year-old brother. I doubt that his father ever imagined that this firearm would be the weapon that uh, was responsible for the death of his child. Encouraging more conversations and not less conversations about gun safety could have prevented such a tragedy. We know there are ways to safely and responsibly own, store, and care for guns that can prevent these unfortunate and unnecessary injuries and deaths. A study in 2000 found that 55% of homes with children and firearms have at least one or more of those firearms in an unlocked place. 43% of guns without a trigger lock that are also in an unlocked place. So just as it's important to ask parents about car seats or strategies to prevent drowning or electrocution, it's also important to assess gun safety in the home. This is a health care issue. That is an indisputable fact. Earlier this year, the Florida legislature passed and the governor signed a law making it illegal for doctors to ask patients and parents about gun ownership. The proponents of this legislation apparently felt that this issue was of such importance that it required them to insert themselves between the doctors and their patients. They must not have noticed Florida's 10% unemployment rate or the 25% uh, uninsured rate in the state. We wonder what they're going to do next. Will it be okay for the legislature or the governor to uh, make it illegal for us to ask parents of asthmatic children if they smoke? Would it be okay with them if we asked patients with sexually transmitted diseases about their sexual habits or if they use protection? Is it still going to be okay to ask patients if they drink alcohol or use intravenous drugs? Are the proponents of this law trying to practice medicine without a license? I think so. We don't need legislators stepping right in the middle of a doctor-patient relationship. To criminalize the free speech between a doctor and a patient, protected by the honor and the oath of our profession, and more importantly by the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, is wrong. For lawmakers to do this while pushing a, po a political agenda and thereby putting Florida's children at risk is wrong. Florida physicians are fighting back. I'm here on behalf of over 200 doctors and medical students across the state who all signed a, peti a petition sponsored by Doctors for America. Doctors for America is a nationwide movement of over 15,000 physicians and medical students that are working together to improve the health of our nation. We as physicians want to be able to protect our patients. And luckily, there are Florida legislators like Representative Kreisman who are listening to us. They recognize the absurdity of this law and the fact that people will die because of it. Representative Kreisman, along with Representative Roussan and Senator Brannon, have introduced a bill to repeal this backward piece of legislation. Physicians are trusted partners in the lives of families. Our role is to empower patients to make informed decisions that will ultimately lead to better health. The sanctity of the doctor-patient relationship has never been questioned before, but this law intrudes into that sacred space. Our patients need to trust that this most special relationship is, is, uh, is strong and confide in doctors all of the health risks that may exist in their homes and in their lives. Physicians depend on unrestricted speech with our patients in order to best serve them, and restricting our speech in collecting health histories is wrong-headed and dangerous. We must repeal this law. We're here to ask you to get behind this effort to repeal the Florida gag on order on doctors and patients and recognize that the communication between doctors and patients and the treatments and the healing work that we do together are protected and not something we can allow partisan politics to intrude on. So once again, I'd like to introduce and thank Representative Kreisman for having the foresight and the strength to introduce this repeal legislation, House Bill 401.